What's up guys? Today we're talking about mastering heading. Everything from defensive heading to goal scoring and even passing with your head. It's all important to develop in your game. A lot of players want to shy away from it. I'd recommend that you don't because if you want to be a 360 degree developed player, you need to master heading, okay? We brought in a guest all the way from Chicago, Illinois, Adam Miserly, also known in the soccer world. You might know him as AFE Football. Dude, pumped to have you here, dude. Happy to be here. Adam has played as a center back, left and right back, even some, some in the sex, six, yeah, in the six CDM, position. Yeah, yeah. So he has a ton of experience in terms of teaching, defending, and heading, things that you need to know how to do in that position. Without further ado, you want to get into it? Let's go. Let's go, dude. Yo, give me the ball, bro. Back post, baby! <laughs> that was the worst cross of my life. First thing, Adam, I've always been pretty bad at winning defensive headers, okay? okay? So judging the ball flight in the air, also after, even if I do win the ball, getting it away from dangerous areas. Absolutely. How do we correct something like that? So for me, it all starts with positioning okay. and how you position yourself in relation to that striker or whoever that opponent is. Um, us being able to create as much space as possible is going to help us generate more power and then we'll be able to time our jumps better. All right, so starting, we'll have Andrew be our, our striker. I am that defender or that person that is marking goal side of this striker. So normally, we have a striker who is trying to flick this ball backwards, clearly towards my goal. I am trying to defend, and if I'm square, he's square. Yes, we have this possible clash of heads. It's not good, we don't want that. So we can easily fix this by just positioning our hips and getting in a side on position to allow this space. And also, I'm almost in this shielding position. Now I'm not pushing because this is far too obvious. Now, if I'm here and I just have my forearm, I'm not putting any pressure. You don't feel pressure, you nope. feel nothing. But as soon as this ball starts to come, I can lean, release myself, and then start to attack. No push, no nothing, it's not obvious. However, what did this do to Andrew's body weight? Went forward. Released, he is now off balance. I have now gained a slight advantage in that 1v1 duel. So, as soon as I've gotten my positioning and created this separation, now it's all about eyes on ball, which it should have been from the start. Contact is a given. We will always make contact, so eyes should always be focused on the ball. It's never this. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I create this separation, now I'm judging that trajectory or that flight. Now, I always see players jumping so early because they want to be first in the air, thinking that that is going to win the ball. Yeah. That is not the case. Yeah. It is about timing that jump and then also, again, maybe another contact is initiated in that jump to prevent that player from getting the timing right on theirs as well. So we separate. So now I have this yard gained. That's a yard of space that they do not have because now they're off balance. Now I can step and make my next contact again, staying side on so that I'm still protecting myself and maintaining my space. Now that we have our space, our timing, now we need to start talking about this ball and where we make contact of this ball. So we want to break down this ball into thirds. We have our top third, middle third, lower third. If we want to generate as much height as possible, we're trying to make contact underneath that ball in that bottom third. If we're talking in defensive and clearing our lines or clearing as much space as we can, we clearly want to be making contact with that ball in that lower third with our third eye forehead region. As this ball comes in, we're what I like to say is tuck your chin and then clearly your eyes must be open because we cannot head something that we do not know where it is. We pull our chin back. As this ball starts to come, we are trying to make contact with it. We are not allowing this ball to make contact with us. We are heading the ball. The ball is not attacking or heading us. <laughs> so, it's important. Yes, very much so. So to generate the most power, as much power as possible, it's all about the timing of the jump and of course the timing of that chin coming in and then poking out. Oof. with defensive heading the scenario that you just went through is you're kind of winning it up high yeah, right yeah. as a center back or center defensive midfielder right ball goes out boom you get out as far as you can exactly what if you get split though right and now they're in a position on the attacking team to whip it across tactically that would look different right absolutely let's say we're starting our line here ball gets played behind between lines we are clearly dropping now often it is faster for us to run forward than it is backwards we all know this however 
Once we are in a good space or position, we now need to start turning our hips to be facing the field so that we don't have necessarily a blind shoulder. So as that ball comes in, then we can start to set ourselves to attack this ball by attacking it forward rather than being here and having to pivot, turn our hips, turn our hips. That's time wasted, time lost goals. So as soon as we set ourselves here, instead of us trying to get as much power and distance through the center of this field, we're either going to play it right back to where it came from. If it's something that is much higher, it's often much easier to flick along and kind of just help the ball across because that's the way the ball is flowing. It's easier just to get some lift on it if it's a little high. What you're doing with your head as far as if I was gonna play it back to where it came from, identical to what we just worked on with Andrew there. But if we're flicking on, it's just, just a flick of that chin. I always heard the phrase, help it, help it along. Just get it higher. If I can meet it and just continue it going at a higher trajectory, then it's missed everyone. So that's how we can defend a cross in those situations. All right, dude, so you helped us walk us through getting the ball out of dangerous situations, playing it safe, doing the right thing with the ball. Let's talk inversely. Scoring goals. Scoring goals. Let's kind score of goals. kind of what everyone wants to do, right? Absolutely. Walk us through kind of best case scenarios and technique for scoring goals to your head. So I think the main thing for me is timing. Timing, timing, timing is everything. And not only timing of your runs, but timing of your jump. Too many people, and myself included at a young age, I thought I needed to get up first, just like winning a defensive header. I need to get up first and I need to be the highest one in the air. And that's not the case at all. Scoring goals doesn't mean you need to jump or anything like that with a header. As long as you time your run and you're running through the ball at the exact moment that you need to be, it's just as good as a goal where you've jumped, yeah. like our boy Cristiano. <laughs> where we are meeting it on the field in relation to that frame of, of the goal and what the pace of the ball, the height of it, how our bodies are positioned, our hips. Mm -hmm. So much is about our hips and how we're positioned and angled. So yeah, all that plays a factor. Want to show us some of that? Absolutely. Let's go. So there are three ways we can basically break down scoring a goal. One being heading it back to our near post or where that ball came from. Second, redirecting fully as we are running across the face of goal directing it far post or third, rising above that ball and heading it downward into the ground. So first we'll take a look at heading back to where the ball came from. So that just means if a ball is being crossed from the right side of the field, I'm heading that ball back to that near post or the right side of the goal. Often it's easier to do this because the ball is coming in with force. We are quite literally using that same force to redirect that ball. We're not flicking it, changing any of that. We're just meeting it just like we would a defensive clearance. I'm heading it towards goal now. Probably looking to hit the middle of that ball. Um, anything in that lower third, we run the risk of putting it high. Something a little bit more difficult than heading that ball back to where it came from is redirecting it and going far post. So. Often I'm running one way and flicking another. Now, again, timing is the word of the day. Making contact and when and how much of your head is making contact and the timing in which you're taking that chin and redirecting that ball has a massive factor in where that ball goes and how it goes. Third, and probably one of the more difficult ways of scoring is rising above that ball and heading it down. So we need to make contact with that top third of the ball to be able to direct it downwards or towards the feet of the goalkeeper, which is something you can also wrong foot them or something that they're not really expecting. So I feel like in this scenario, I've seen a lot of strikers do this and stuff, heading it downward is less about accuracy and more about just getting it down, yes. right? It's about getting a, of course. your head onto the ball directing it down because that just creates havoc for the keeper. Yeah. It bounces, it bobbles, it's whatever. Absolutely. And in that same breath, I also liken or associate heading downward with almost standing or being in a more standing or a fixed position and rising up and being able to snap down rather than moving into that ball. Yeah. It's very difficult to get above that ball as you're moving at a pretty decent pace right. to get on top of it and head downward. Mm -hmm. It's possible, but I always associate getting kind a good firm yeah. plant, see the ball and be able to head up and down. We've seen it from great players, of yeah, course. Makes so. sense. Last thing we're covering is keeping possession of the ball using your head. Okay, how do you transition the ball in the air down to the ground? 
to, if you're a left back, bang, to your left winger. If you're a center midi, down to your other center midi, transition out, or Absolutely. if you're in the back, give it to your keeper, nice and easy. Can you walk us through a little bit on how you'd go about doing that? Absolutely. So first, we need to think about timing. We also need awareness. What is around us? Who can we play? Who are options? Mm -hmm. And then of course, how do we cushion this ball with our head so that we can get it to the floor and play? So we talked about the thirds of this ball, the middle third, clearly it's gonna be put on a line. If we get that top third, we're heading it down. This is the area, somewhere between that middle and top third so that we can direct that ball down into feet. Now, second part of that is cushioning. We talked about when we attack, or we're trying to score or anything like that, we're going to attack this ball, pushing that chin backwards, then forward. That's that snap of the neck we're looking for. So the technique used to do this is by cushioning that ball or thinking to cushion this ball. And how do we do this? So just like how we would with our foot, right, if a yeah. ball is pinged into our foot, as soon as that ball comes into our foot, we're kind of letting our foot fall backwards or go back to take off that pace. Same right. thing with our head. Yeah. As soon as that ball comes into our head, we're pulling that chin back to kind of hopefully knock that ball down so that we can play right away. All right guys, so that is our tutorial on heading. I know that I learned some stuff, so I hope you did too. It's very rare to get kind of the insight from a pro level perspective on how to go about those things. So thank you so much for your time, dude. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Guys, Adam's stuff is gonna be down in the description below, TikTok, Insta. He's coming back a little bit on YouTube. Absolutely. So definitely check him out. He's gonna be teaching you guys a lot of good things. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, guys. Remember, your dreams don't work if you don't. See ya. One more, one more, one more. One more, one more ball? One more. All right, I got Just you, I got you. Oh, that's a big one. Go. There we go, yes, baby. Yes, boys. Yes, there lads. There we go. Yes, lads.